Hi, this is Kemper Holt reporting for AV Showrooms, and this is my review of the Moabs from Tekton, the Big Blues. Um, first, Eric Alexander has about 32 years involved in the speaker industry. Uh, he started Tekton about 15 years ago, and for many years was the sole employee, cook, bottle washer, you name it. Everything was under Eric's hand, so he knows the process from beginning to end. The, the first question I get asked about the uh, Tectons, and Moabs in particular, are, what is with all those tweeters? That can't sound good. There must be lobing. Well, uh, I'll refer you to the stereophile review of the impact monitor where J.A. says uh, he dismisses the lobing problems and louds the exceptionally flat on-axis response of the impact monitor. So measurements, just fine. He uses 15 wave core tweeters in a unique hybrid mid-range tweeter hybrid array. The tweeters are a, a silk or fabric dome and they operate from about 300 hertz on the bottom end and the single tweeter in between the two groups of seven it acts as a typical tweeter and it uh, begins to come on song around 3000 hertz. So in terms of coherency what could be better than having the same driver cover everything from 300 hertz on up? Uh, very coherent. The 15 tweeters have about the equivalent radiating area of a 9-inch mid-range with sensationally less moving mass. So this allows the beginning of notes particularly to, to start right on cue and it really helps the realism of the whole speaker. And the Tekton Moabs are big. They are 69 inches tall, 13 and a half inches wide, 17 inches deep. So yes, they're big. They weigh 135 pounds and are rear ported. Because of their size, they do get to have a high sensitivity. Uh, the rating is 98 dBs into 4 ohms, so I'm going to equivalent that to 95 dBs into a typical 8 ohm load, which is still very sensitive and allows for that tecton house sound to come barreling through. Live, exciting, uh, concert-like experience that Technon is known for. Big size also allows for those two 12-inch eminence woofers, one at the top, one at the bottom, and a, a large enclosure to be properly ported. The ports are tuned at about 32 hertz. In my room, I get 20 hertz pressurizing the room. At 25 hertz, things in the room that never rattled before are rattling like crazy. Um, this is a real full range loudspeaker for $4,500. The crossovers are first order face coherent for both the mid-range array and the tweeter. And Eric tells me that he has a proprietary bracing method to uh, help reduce resonances in this large cabinet. I do want to tell you a couple things, a couple tips that will help to get the best out of the Tekton speakers that have this array. Number one is you must attach the spikes. If you leave the threaded holes open, it compromises the base porting loading and you'll never get the, uh, the base performance that's available to you if you do screw the, the spikes in. And while you're screwing the spikes in, grab that level and you want to level it front to back and side to side. Uh, with all those tweeters, uh, taking time to properly uh, address the leveling of the speaker will help you in the image specificity and it will help in the general soundstage uh, presentation. Some other options that aren't listed on the Tekton website are a beryllium tweeter upgrade. If you're looking for that last little bit of uh, resolution from 3000 hertz up, 500 bucks gets you a pair of Satori beryllium tweeters to solve that issue for you. And if you want to go whole hog, for $9,000, you can get 30 of the same Satori tweeters. So from 300 hertz up, you have beryllium tweeters doing all the mid-range and, and treble, and you would have the ultimate 
Moab. Those are the most important technical aspects of the Moabs. Now let's move on to something even more important. Let's listen to some music. Our bodies are hurting like hell They promise to never leave us alone Our hearts are breaking like bones Picking stars like apples from the sky Threatening to throw them in the sea So we won't have anything to gaze upon What happened to liberty And the bridges we almost got done what happened to them? Was going to take us home?
Annette Askovic. Wow, that was sensational. At the beginning, her voice was so delicate and properly sized, and then the sax comes in, boom, and then that low bass from out of nowhere just lowers its, its uh, uh, the drum just hits, and you feel it. Um, I just thought it was very realistic sounding. Uh, the voice was particularly good, and that sax, man, it just rolled in like it really would in a live concert. Loud, explosive, you could hear the reed sound. Uh, it was just terrific. <laughs> I have really enjoyed having the Moabs in my system. Their transparency has allowed me to identify all the improvements I've been able to make lately to my system. Thanks to Kevin Hayes, I have, in, I have a signature 2A, 2 preamp in my system, which brought low-level details, an expansive soundstage, and that 3D tube goodness that you just can't get anywhere else. I'd also like to thank Ted Denny and Andy at Synergistic Research. They have finally allowed me to have a single brand loom, cable loom, in my system. Uh, it, this is not the Uber stuff. This is the foundation level, entry series, very affordable cable system. And I have to tell you, I made a huge uptick in my system. Blacker backgrounds, more detail and information, uh, bigger dynamic swings. Uh, but more important, I think it must be a coherency or something, but my, my system just sounds much more real to me after the, after the loom was added. So I really want to thank, uh, thank Ted and Andy. I've also been enjoying the Comet Ion combination. The Comet's the DAC and the Ion's the power amp, essentially. Um, that gives me, compared to other systems, that gives me probably a little more information and a little more treble extension. I also added a Rogue Medusa hybrid amp. I've rolled in some Brymar 12 aux 7s and I think that gives me a little more dimensionality and a little more weight in the bass, but they're both excellent amps. Okay, now onto the sound quality. To avoid being painted as an over-the-top Tecton fanboy, there are some things about the speakers. For instance, they're big. They are really big, but their size allows for that sensitivity that creates that house sound of Tecton, live, concert, excite, exciting. Uh, speakers at 87 aren't going aren't gonna to get there. Um, also, you don't get a veneer. You get a color. Uh, not a big deal, but uh, we chose the blue for contrast in my room. Uh, Eric has some beautiful colors on his website. Uh, go there and choose the right one for, for, for your room. Um, after going to Capital Audio Fest and coming back home, there are some other uh, points I'd like to mention. The bass articulation isn't as good as it could possibly be. Eric solves this in his other bigger speakers, the Encore and the Ulfberts, by adding mid-bass couplers to this power range that increases the articulation. But this in no means affects their impact or extension, both of which are there in spades. The treble extension if you want to get the last iota of treble extension out of a, out of a speaker, check the box for the Brillium upgrade. That, that will get you there. Also, if you're used to the way many monitors disappear, these don't quite have that ability. They disappear nicely, but the sound stage begins in the plane of the speakers in my room. So you don't get, quite get that, where is the sound coming from? But the sound stage is wide, it's deep. And image specificity is perfectly precise in that field. But you're not going to get the Borison, the QLN, the Acora type of mini monitor disappearing. Aside from that, I love them. We can talk about value. Here we have a true sensational value in high-end audio. $4,500 never got you anything close to this in the past. Uh, this is just a terrific loudspeaker. And I can use the term full range because it really is full range. 20 hertz, as I mentioned, pressurizes your chest, pressurizes the room. 25 hertz rattles things in the room that never rattled before. Uh, you don't need a subwoofer. You're getting a full range speaker. Not a quasi full range speaker, but a real full range, full range speaker down to 20 hertz. The bass power region from 40 to 250 hertz is very important for a speaker to convey. That's where drum kits, cellos, pianos, uh, plucked double basses live. 
And if the speaker doesn't get that right, they either shine or fall flat. The Moabs shine in this region. Drum kits have realistic punch and, and impact and excitement. Uh, cellos have perfect timbre, great tone, and they can be dynamically exciting as well. And pianos reveal themselves to be the percussive instrument they really are. Exciting, dynamic, reverberant, yet the intonation of the pianist's uh, fingering is very easily delineated and heard, and it really helps draw me into the performance uh, emotionally. One of the most surprising aspects of the Moabs are their sensational rightness to the mid-range. Um, it's precise, it's scaled right, it's focused, it's the right height. Um, when, I, when I want to listen to the purity of, of vocals, I'll go to Joni Mitchell out of her Blue Album, or Alison Krauss from Oh Brother Where Art Thou. These small acoustic songs are scaled down properly, the voices are stunningly real and just beautiful, and yet if I put on Rimsky -Kors Korsakov's tum uh, Dance of the Tumblers, boom, I get it wide as the room, 25 feet deep, huge sound stage. These are not one-trick ponies, their scale uh, follows the source material quite easily. Many speakers get the mid-range right, and Eric gets it right in a unique way with his uh, tweeter array. But that power range from 40 to 250 hertz is very difficult. And if you don't get it right, the speaker, for me, fails to satisfy. Well, Eric and the Tecton Moab get it right in a big way. It's very, it makes the speaker completely satisfying to me, and that's very important to convey to you out there. If you're looking for a pair of sub $10,000 pair of loudspeakers, I urge you to try to audition a pair of Moabs. I think you'll find them to be very satisfying, very revealing, easy to dry. So if you're uh, looking to use a 20 watt tube amp, be my guest, step right up. These are your, these are your speakers. And uh, I just think that uh, the Moabs are a wonderful uh, addition to the high end and are affordable to boot. So thank you for listening to this session of AV Showrooms. This is Kemper Holt signing off.